Gulf Power, a southern company subsidiary, saw the need to replace existing transmission towers along the Crist Holly Line near Pensacola. Environmental concerns prohibited large land-based construction equipment from entering the wetlands surrounding certain sections of the power line. Gulf Power contacted Ericsson Aircrane for the use of the Ericsson S-64 F-model helicopter. The air crane would be used to accomplish the removal of 15 existing structures and installation of 19 new structures. Ericsson Air Crane has been using the S-64 air crane helicopter with a patented anti-rotation device since 1971. Ericsson's tower construction experience spans over 7,000 miles of power line across the United States and areas within Canada, Alaska, Peru, and Korea. Gulf Power brought in Irby Construction Company of Jackson, Mississippi as the primary line construction contractor. Irby personnel have a history of over 20 years of successful power line work with Ericsson Aircrane. The first phase of the power line rebuild would take place at a section of the line running into the northern boundary of Eglin Air Force Base. This section of the Crist Holly Line would see the placement of three new steel pole H-frame structures the H-frames would be supported by tubular caissons, providing firm support in the soft marshland. Irby brought in a vibrohammer and vegetable oil hydraulic power pack device, complete with extendable leveling gantry arms for precision caisson driving work. The hammer and power pack gantry are designed and built by American Pile Driving Equipment Company of Kent, Washington. The S-64 air crane, piloted by Max Evans and Dave Cox, started the work by flying the crane mats out to the site to serve as temporary platforms for the hammer and power pack gantry. Next came the power pack gantry, which was placed with the gantry arms precisely within the target area for driving the caisson. The Vibra hammer followed and the S-64 air crane placed it on a crane mat to await the caisson. The caisson was brought in and secured to the gantry arms. The air crane then brought the hammer to clamp onto the caisson and flew back to the staging area to fly crane mats to the next location. After the caisson was driven far enough, the binders were released, the gantry arms retracted, and the caisson was driven the rest of the way to the proper depth. The air crane lifted the power pack gantry to the new position next to the driven caisson. The helicopter flew a new caisson into the gantry arms and placed the hammer. After the second caisson foundation had been driven and plumbed, half of the crew moved on to the next site and the air crane transported the power pack gantry, crane mats and vibra hammer to begin the process again.
Ericsson Air Crane Company manufactures, operates, and supports the Sky Crane under the name of the Ericsson S64 Air Crane. The larger F model, which was first manufactured by Ericsson in 1993, has a lift capacity of 12.5 tons at sea level. With the six caisson foundations prepared to support the three steel pole H-frame towers, the air crane helicopter brought each H-frame tower as a completed unit and placed it within the caisson sockets. Ericsson Air Crane assists in the design and production of all guide systems for helicopter construction work. Crews worked vigorously to tighten the leveling bolts around each base to secure the tower. When the leveling bolts were tightened and the H-frame was in plumb, the air crane brought in buckets of concrete with a specially designed pouring funnel. Since the completion of this project, S-64 air crane caisson steel pole installation has grown at a steady pace as more utilities recognize the performance and economy inherent in the heli template system. Delmarva Power used an Ericsson S-64 air crane helicopter to install more than 300 transmission towers along a 90-mile line that was built to serve up to 300,000 more customers in Delaware. The air crane carried a patented APE heli template along with the APE 150T vibro hammer attached to the caisson. The caisson steel pole foundations measured up to 48 inches in diameter and were up to 37 feet long. The final helicopter construction phase of the Powerline rebuild project took place along a section of the Crist Holly line that originated from the Crist plant north of Pensacola. Fifteen structures were scheduled for upgrade from a single circuit to a double circuit tower. Work started with the air crane helicopter removing the fifteen existing structures with a claw hook. The helicopter used the claw to grab the cable rigging attached to each tower for secure transport. The replacement towers were a new design incorporating the strength of a steel pole with the capability of double circuit line transmission. The towers were designed by Mesa Associates and built by Thomas and Betts. Each structure was designed to be built in three sections with the exception of two larger four section river crossing towers. The air crane placed the 18,500 pound bases of every structure along the line first as tower crews were present to complete the bolt down. The 19,500 pound middle sections were placed next with a minimum of time and effort. The Ericsson S-64 air crane helicopter is the only helicopter in the world with a fully functional aft pilot station. This aft seat station has a complete set of flight controls that allow the pilot to have full command of the aircraft during precision construction operations. To facilitate placement of the third steel pole section, Thomas and Betts manufactured a pyramid guide at the top of every middle section. 
The pyramid guide proved very useful as the aircrane placed the final third stage steel pole on each structure in an average of four minutes. The helicopter construction phase of the Chris Tully transmission line rebuild project involving Ericsson Aircrane lasted five days from October 17th to October 21st in the year 2000.